All right. How's it going, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Forward Thinking Founders. We talk to founders about their companies, their visions for the future, and how the two collide. Today, I'm very excited to be talking to Sheridan Claiborne, who is the co-founder of Lentable. Welcome to the show. How's it going? Fantastic. Just came into the uh, office on my second. Uh, they finally got Nitro Cold Group right oh, no there. Way. You work. So your boy is pretty jazzed up about that. That is all. I'm, whoa, that's like that's probably worth the cost in itself. Nitro. Oh, cold I, I I cannot describe. I mean, once you start throwing nitrogen in any cold brew, I don't know what it is. It gets foamy. It gets creamy. Um, I've I've been on a like a keto diet recently, so I've just been drinking half and half. So it is a wild concoction, but I love this thing. It's like my favorite drink. Yeah, for sure. Well. I'll, I'll need to check out our local we work and see if they got that nitrogen uh, nitrogen cold brew too. Um, well, uh, but we're we're here not chatting about cold brew. We're here talking about what you're working on with Lend Table. So for people yeah. that aren't familiar with with what you're working on, can you kind of share what it is and kind of um, yeah, and what Lend Table is? Yeah. So Mile High View, uh, where Lend Table, we're the first platform for providing low and kind of middle income workers with wealth building loans. So we essentially serve as a capital partner that helps folks get access to their 401k and employee benefits. Um, but that sounds fluffy. So like, what exactly does that mean? Well, in simplest form, if you have a 401k match, let's say you're working at Walmart, you make 60k a year, you got three kids. So in your case, you just haven't been using that 401k match because you aren't willing to kind of take out that much money from your paycheck. You need all that day to day liquidity we will essentially give you capital so that you can get that 401k match. And then we make a small amount of money on the back end uh, by taking like a fee that we essentially charge the employer, but you're just left with like $3,000 in your 401k every single year without having to put up any of your own money, do a credit check uh, or lose any loss of liquidity. So are you, so for this, if someone wanted to use this, do you ultimately go through an employer and say, Hey, we're going to work with your company. All your net, all your employees now have the ability to do this. Or is it almost direct to consumer where you go straight to a conservator and be like, yo, like you can do this with your paycheck. Yeah. How, how does it work? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe if it's useful, I can just take you through uh, kind of like exactly how you'd sign up. Um, so let's just say, let's use this example. So you work at Walmart, uh, you have a 401k match, but for whatever, any set of reasons you're not using it. Um, essentially, you'll come onto our website, uh, you'll create an account. All we do from there is we'll just essentially uh, connect to your bank account and your payroll provider. Um, so we can just like verify, hey, this person actually works at this place. Um, once we see that, okay, great, like they do work at this place, they do have this 401k match, um, you'll contribute. Let's say Walmart does a $3,000 401k match. So you'll contribute $3,000 of money to your 401k we will issue you a card with that entire balance. Um, exactly the way the math breaks out is like if you're putting in $3,000 of pre-tax money, let's just say you're at like a 25% income tax bracket. So the amount of money that you're missing from your paycheck is $2,250. So like the amount of money we give you right now is $2,250 on a card. So like your paycheck is exactly the same. The only difference is that now you have $3,000 in your 401k, plus another $3,000 from your employer. Um, and then essentially in six months when that money vests, what we'll do is we'll help you do a withdrawal on that. So 3,000 of that 6,000 gets pulled out. That'll get hit with income tax, but that's fine because we baked in the model. So our money is now paid off. What's left over is this $3,000 401k match that you didn't have in the first place. Um, so from that, we'll take a fee, let's call it 15% in this case, so we'll get back 450 bucks. That's kind of our profit. Um, but what the user now has is $2,500 that they just straight up would not have had in the first place. And to mention, this is something that we help our users get access to every single year. Um, because for a lot of these folks, they've been like, we've got a client, uh, Zabina, she's been working at Walmart for 20 years, single black mother. Um, and because she makes 40K a year, she's just never been able to access it. She's been paycheck to paycheck, never been able to afford it. Um, so really our goal is, the way we kind of talk about it is like, don't let your employer underpay you. You have all these benefits, they're rightfully yours. You know, just because of a lack of liquidity, you haven't been able to access it. So we want to be able to help you access it. That's pretty incredible. I'd love to hear why you decided to get started with this and, and get yeah. the origin story for Lundable. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, it really all started. So I essentially dropped out of school. Um, I, I had worked on a bunch of different kind of fintech startups in the past. And um, I guess for a little kind of personal context, I, when I was 17, I worked at JP Morgan. When I was 18, I worked at Goldman Sachs on their private equity group. So I was like the youngest person to work there. Um, the experience that I kind of had there was like, wow, like, Private equity, um, all the ways that these billionaires are able to save and invest their money is fascinating. Like they're able to generate like 20, 30, 40% year over year returns. Um, but I was kind of frustrated by the fact I was like the only black person that had ever been on the team in its 20 year history. And past that, when I looked at my own friends, family, and community, they had none of those same access to resources. So finance was this like incredible vehicle for all of these hundred millionaires, billionaires to generate all of this money for themselves and their families. But when I looked at like my family, for example, my parents were on food stamps. Um, they ran retail businesses and worked as hard as they fucking could, but it was just so hard to ever be able to make ends meet. Um, on top of that, they couldn't open a credit card. They were constantly dealing with mortgage payments that were late. They were dealing with overdraft fees on their bank. Finance was actually this like terrible cycle that made us like they constantly just spiraled into debt. Um, so yeah, that just kind of got me initially very fascinated in the world of fintech and the world of figuring out like how do we help most Americans, like the other 99%, save and invest their money like the 1%. Um, the specific catalyst for this business though is I had started at Dropbox about a year ago um, and it was like my first experience getting a 401k match in employee benefits. Um, and I just thought it was the coolest thing. I was like, oh my God, like one, Vanguard's platform is terrible. This is so confusing to use. But it's dope. Like if you put in six grand, they just give you six thousand dollars for free. Like straight up, it's just a hundred percent guaranteed return on your investment. There's no reason not to do it. At least was my thought. Um, but then I was talking about it with a bunch of my buddies, and they kept telling me. I like I had a buddy who like just started on the sales team there, and he wasn't using it. And my incorrect assumption to start was like, yo, like don't be stupid, like use it, it's literally free money, like when else are you gonna get 100% guaranteed return on your investment? And I was like, it's just straight up stupidity to not use it. Um, but the thing is, after talking with a lot of the folks, even at Dropbox, and Dropbox is like a wealthy place, um, they were like, look, like I just moved out to San Francisco, I have rent, I have food, I have these expenses I need to pay on my student bill, I gotta send money back to my parents. Like, I straight up cannot afford this. I don't care if this 6,000 turns into 18,000. I need 100% of that $6,000 right now. Um, and that served as like the foundation for what this is. I think there's this, there's this really bad kind of ideology um, in like American finance that like a lot of these folks who are in these like liquidity strapped positions, they're looked at as like not financially rational. Um, and I think I'll use my mom as an example. Even she's never done a finance class, worked in finance a day in her life. She is a significantly better financial manager than I am. When she was like, she had four kids, there was a family of six. She was managing income streams that would go from zero to a little bit to back to zero sometimes. It was incredibly complex. And the reason that they don't have any money saved for retirement is not because she spends money on Gucci purses. I've never seen her spend money on anything in her life. The real reason was just like, you, ha you have to pay your rent, you have to buy food, you have to help out your kids. Those are all things you should not forego that to put money into an investment account. Um, so I think it was that fun foundational idea that really the biggest thing you need to solve for these folks is get them access to liquidity. Um, because the biggest asset, the biggest benefit you can have in, in finance is the whole reason there's so many billionaires and women is because when those kids were 20, they had $100 million. It doesn't matter if you're a phenomenal investor or a terrible investor. When you take $100 million and give it an investment horizon of 50 years, you're going to have a billion dollars. Whereas for most Americans, they don't have any of that. They're living on $0 of net new income, $0 of net new cash in their bank account every single year. So it's about figuring out how do you help those folks to actually get access to the capital in the first place. Bit of a long-winded answer on that one. <laughs> oh, no, it, it's good. It, it, it's a great story um, and something I don't think enough people think about. It. And, and I'm, I'm very excited. That you, I'm excited that you started it, excited that you're on the podcast. I'm curious, do you have um, a challenge where when you communicate to potential users or customers um, about LendTable, um, do you have this issue where like it sounds almost too, too good to be true in some capacity? Yes. Um, and it's just like you need to convince people, no, like we're good people and we're here to help you. Like, do you have that you know, element at all with, with what you're doing? 
So I'd say the biggest thing that we're trying to kind of optimize for for this business is you're absolutely right. When people hear this, they're like, you guys are starting to sound like a Nigerian prince right now. You know what I mean? Like you're saying, wait, wait, wait. So like, I don't put up any of my money. I take on no risk. There's no way I can lose money, but I somehow make $3,000 every year. Like, come on. Like there's gotta be a catch. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's been like a really big thing we've been trying to figure out for our mustard. And, and the way that we've tried to proposition it now is that really what these folks are doing are just letting their employers underpay them. It would be like if your employer told you, hey, we're gonna pay you $60,000 a year, but if you show up at this specific office and ask, we'll give you an additional 3,000 bucks. So it's like these employers are offering something like that, but these folks just like haven't been able to walk up to this, this office and ask for that money. Um, so yeah, a big part of our messaging is trying to figure out, like, there's a bunch of questions we get all the time. Like one, they're like, wait, but like, I don't need a loan. Um, you know, like, like most, most of the time, and I, I think this is a, a paradigm shift we're really gonna try to start, is that especially for folks who are more cash strapped, a loan and folks giving capital is almost always negative. Like when my dad got a credit card, that sucked because like he had to pay these egregious interest rates. He had to do it out of desperation. Whereas like when you look at billionaires, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, uh, Bill Gates, credit is this incredible vehicle to make more money. Like you can put up a million dollars, have access to $10 million and you just do to your return. You make even more money. Um, so that's essentially the same thing we're trying to enable for these folks here. Like we're trying to be really clear that like, in, in essence, like we don't even necessarily want to call this one because at the end of the day, we're just giving you money to get this asset that you didn't have. And then the only way that we charge money from you guys is just a percentage of what we meant here. But like if anything crazy would have happened, again, we only make a percentage of your profit. If there's no profit to be had, you don't even owe us anything back. Um, so that's a really big thing we're trying to push on is that if you have access to capital, you can use that to build wealth. That's how all the millionaires and billionaires do it. They do it with credit. They do it with equity. They do it with raising capital to be able to turn it into more capital. So we're trying to enable and essentially leverage that ability for the rest of the Americans. And if you look at your average day, um, I'm, I'm kind of interested in knowing, like, what do you spend most of your time on? Um, are, are you finding new customers, are you potentially shipping code, learning more about markets? What's a yeah. day, in the, day in the life um, for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, what kind of context here? Uh, we started the business um, back in, like, February, March, and we've kind of been going like crazy since then. Um, so it can, it, it can really ch uh, kind of change and deviate. Um, Recently, what I've been on is fundraising. So like we just raised uh, four and a half million dollars. Um, so that has taken up a large part of my time. My co-founder has been really focused building product, um, onboarding more folks. Um, now that I'm kind of switching off the fundraising hat, I'm much more focused on, we work with a lot of channel partners for distribution. So like, as you kind of mentioned, we've got like a direct to consumer angle, which is like, hey, we're just getting people to like hit our website, come through, we're working with news publications and articles and LinkedIn and Google. Uh, but we're also working with employers, 401k providers, wealth managers. Um, recently, we've been like striking up uh, a kind of like partnership with management leadership for tomorrow, which is like a 15,000 minority um, kind of like student group for helping kids get their first job out of college. Um, so yeah, it's about working with kind of distribution on those blocks. But the day can deviate wildly um, as, as far as like what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. We've also been working a lot on hiring recently. So it's going to be a lot of like going through interviews, finding new candidates, talking, talking with more folks. Well, congratulations on the fundraise. That's exciting. I feel like the, the best thing about, fundra uh, about the fundraise is like you finish it so you can go back to working on your company, right? And now, as you just alluded to, you have some cash, you're going to hire some people. How do you think about it, um, building out your initial team for this, um, making sure you get the right culture and their culture okay. fit and culture add? Like, and do you, wh where's the balance between like knowing what you're doing versus like having no idea and like figuring out okay. on, on the fly as you have some m money yeah. right now? I mean, if anything, that point right there is a big cultural aspect of like what we're kind of looking to like have here. Like the kind of folks that uh, should join our team have got to be folks who are like very scrappy on their feet, like they're comfortable in ambiguity. Uh, and also, you know, it, it, it's a small thing. Like Mitchell and I, I'm kind of my co-founder, we just onboarded our first person. Um, 
there's just a lot going on. So it's not like a, we were almost the opposite of micromanagement. Um, so yeah, I think culture is definitely something we've kind of been thinking about a lot. Um, I know one optimization in particular is we're making sure that at the very least of all the candidates we talk to, at least 50% of them are minorities or women. Um, you know, this is a problem which kind of like unsurprisingly predominantly affects folks with minorities, women, foreign internationals, people from geographically constrained areas. Like we don't, this isn't a San Francisco problem. If anything, it's actually in a lot of cases, not a San Francisco problem. This is a Kansas, a Missouri, a Louisiana problem. Um, that's where these folks really have the least access to credit, the least access to these vehicles, but are at the most need. Um, so we want to make sure that our team is very representative of the folks that we're actually serving. And to be clear, it's, it's not like, you know, if anything, there's orders of magnitude more poor white folks that struggle with this as well. So we just want to make sure that we have people who aren't just from like San Francisco working in tech, growing up in these kind of like super wealthy neighborhoods and communities. We want to make sure we've got, you know, like someone who grew up in like rural Louisiana from like a, a white low income family. We want to make sure we've got someone who grew up in like South side of Chicago, just so that empathy with the users, that understanding of who they're serving, that understanding of how they view their own personal finances um, is a super important aspect of the business. And then if you were to look out at like five, 10 years, and maybe you raise more money, maybe not, but the company grows in size significantly, what does it look like in, four, in five to 10 years? So I guess in other words, what's your big vision for yeah. Unstable and kind of what direction are you growing in? Yeah, for sure. Um, so, okay, the, the first thing we talk about is the size of the 401k match market. Essentially, 25% of people in the U.S. contribute $0 to their 401k. They get none of their 401k match at all. Um, so if we can solve that problem, essentially what we do is we help 30 million Americans by putting $24 billion of net new money in their hands every single year. So we're hyper-focused on just killing it with that because that's so much value we can kind of create for our users. Um, but past that, there's this broader $150 billion of employee benefits, ESPPs, HSAs, and utilized PTO, equity stock grants. Um, and these are benefits where both liquidity is a huge problem, because I guarantee you, go to any McDonald's, go to any Taco Bell, go to any Walgreens, and ask them if they have their 401k match, 90% of them are going to say no. And of every single person who said no, 100% of them are going to say, I'm also not using those other employee benefits. Um, so the way we look at it is that by helping someone access that $3,000 401k match and that $3,000 of other employee benefits every single year, by the time, if they start working with us at 60, by the time that they're, sorry, if they start working with us at 20, by the time that they're 60, they now have a million dollars in their 401k that they wouldn't have had before. But with that comes a whole new set of problems. You've got someone who grew up in a low income community without the access and the resources to understand how to save and invest this stuff. Because in large part, they never even had the means to be able to access it in the first place. So there's this whole new set of things we need to do around advisory of showing, hey, here's actually how you take this money from your 401k and pay off your mortgage. And even better yet, you don't even need to pay taxes on it. Here's how you can do it to deal with student loan payments. Here's how you can do it to actually help set up a fund for your kid. Um, the, our goal is really to take all of these clients. Um, and the way we look at it, the only real way of becoming a millionaire for the majority of Americans is to access this 401k match. That's how you do it. Like if you have $3,000 a year, you can be on a 50 or 60 or 70K a year income and you can legitimately be a millionaire by the time you retire. But the most important thing by far and away is accessing it as early as possible. Like if you wait until you're 50 to access these employee benefits, you are going to have $50,000 in your account at best. Whereas if you start with this stuff at 20, through compounding interest, which is what all the billionaires, all, all of the millionaires actually leverage to make so much money, that's how you legitimately have a million dollars minimum by the time you hit retirement age. And then to make that happen and to make that huge change, you'll need some help, right? Like you'll need potentially more capital. You might need, uh, you know, employees, you know, customers, things like that. Um, so for kind of my last question is how can the forward thinking founders community help you? I mean, w w people listening are in all of those camps. I'm curious, yeah. is there an ask that you have for the, uh, for the listeners in a way that can help you with Lundtable? Yeah. I mean, 
biggest thing is if you have a 401k match, if you're friends with who have 401k matches, if you work at a company where you think you know people who have 401k matches and aren't using it, um, sending them to our website, lendtable.com. You can have them email me directly, share it at lendtable.com. Uh, would absolutely love to talk with them. I think outside of that, uh, if you work at a company um, where you want to help you know, your broader employees get access to their match, if you know wealth managers, 401k providers, um, folks who can help with distribution here, that's awesome. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, you know, if you're potentially interested in joining the team, we're hiring for a full stack engineer right now, a designer and a front end engineer. Um, we're also kind of hiring in like the business development and marketing side. So again, feel free to reach out there. Um, but yeah, biggest thing for us is if you know anyone who we can essentially help make money, please let us know. And even better, if you send me an email or if you sign up online, we will give you $100 for every single person you refer. We can send it via Venmo. We can do it over like a card. You tell me, we'll make it happen. And then uh, for if someone's interested in any of those things, and I'm sure plenty of people are, um, how can someone get in touch? What's your, uh, what's your URL? Are yeah. you on social media? Can they email you? Um, how can someone get in touch? Yeah, so you can absolutely email me. Um, Sheridan at lendtable.com. That's lend, L-E-N-D, table, T-A-B-L-E. Um, and then our website is lendtable.com. So you can sign up on the website. You can also email me directly if you have questions. Um, shit, if you really have questions, I'll throw out my phone number. Fuck it. You want to send me a text? 224-392-3892. Feel free to text me. That's my personal phone number. <laughs> All right, there you have, you, have, you have the digits and you have the email if you want to reach out to Sheridan. Well, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. I think what you're doing is extremely important work and i'm very excited to see where where it goes so thanks again for coming on to the podcast hey thanks so much for having me guys it was great chatting